What's up YouTube? My name is Scott. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Unify Protect G5. Unify is newest camera in the lineup and I'm pretty excited to share this with you and it's going to be a quick review. Let's get started. So the first part of this review, I'm going to compare the Unify G5 to the Unify G3, which is kind of their mainstream camera. I've had that one out in my driveway for probably about a year now. And uh, just going over the footage and just looking at it, um, what I have here is the driveway at night at 2 a.m. And you can see here the low light performance. Now, if I go over and switch over to the G5 footage from the night after I'd put it and swapped it out outside, uh, man, do you notice some low light performance increases here, uh, improvements. Uh, this camera is obviously got a little bit of a wider aperture to it. Not only that, you can see that the nighttime infrared performance is so much more improved. You can read quite a bit of detail. You can even see that there's an Aspen garbage can in my driveway temporarily. Um, but just even the light off of the, uh, the snow in the middle of night at 2 a.m., the low light performance here is just incredible. It actually shocked me. So it's a night and day difference going from the Unified G3 to the G5. Not only with the G5 do you get uh, additional uh, image pixels uh, going to 4 megapixel, um, just even the low light performance at night is just amazing how good this camera got. Um, so kudos to Unify for uh, the improvements here and keeping the cost of this camera well under $200. Um, I'm very appreciative of that because if you have to deploy many of these, um, that's not a a small budget you can work with uh, having, you know, the G4s at $200 uh, a camera. So kudos to them. Uh, I think they've done quite a bit uh, of improvements for the amount of money you pay for this camera. It's a pretty good value, so I cannot say anything bad about it. So what we have here is a shot of my backyard where I upgraded from a G3 to a G5. This is the performance in the picture of the G3 snapshot. Um, it's full resolution here. Um, you'll notice pretty good picture, but then when I swapped out and upgraded to the G5, man alive, ha do you notice some detail as far as the brightness is so much more improved, the contrast to the picture, and not only that, just the wide angle. So you've increased the amount of aperture or, um, viewing angle in the sensor itself, I mean, I'm able to capture a lot more information. Not only that, you're stepping up from 1080p to 4 megapixel. Um, so not quite 4K, but um, man, does it look like it um, for a security camera and just the amount of color, the brightness and the detail and the clarity of the picture is pretty, pretty noticeable and so much more improved compared to the G3. Again, this camera seems to perform really well. I don't know that the G3 is a fair comparison because it is two generations older, but um, as far as the cost and where Unify has put this camera in the lineup, you know, right around a little bit over $100, um, to me it compares to the G3 as far as the cost. Another uh, little bit of a comparison I did was looking at the G3 at night. This is the G3's nighttime performance in my backyard facing my neighbors. You can see here, all you can see is the infrared overcast on the snow in front of the camera. You can see obviously the neighbors have a kitchen light on in the house. This is on uh, the 16th. So if I switch over and go to the next day um, after the camera had already been implemented, this is with the infrared off on the G5. You'll notice here there's some noise in the picture, but the, again, the infrared is off. So the camera is doing nothing to, to improve nighttime performance. Uh, you can see the kitchen light of the neighbor's house, uh, some lights down at a neighboring house. It is so bright and the amount of color coming out of this camera um, at 2.30 a.m. with no infrared performance on at all or no infrared on at all is pretty noticeable um, for that camera at night. So this next part of the review, I've actually compared it to my Unify G4, which is also on that side of the house. And even looking at the G4 from the G5, 
you'll notice here the G4, really good image resolution. Um, you can maybe see some a little bit of noise at night and through the camera during the day, but nighttime performance is pretty good on the G4. Um, the microphone is pretty impeccable compared to the G5, but if you notice here, the nighttime performance of the infrared and the snow and what you're seeing here, uh, the image is pretty good. Um, nice detail, but not that bright. And I, it's actually kind of shocking because the G4 is a more expensive camera. Granted, it's older, but if we swap over back again to the G5 footage, I'm just amazed. Um, you look here, and this is roughly the five minutes apart on the video footage that night. Um, at 2 a.m., the G5 just picks up so much more brightness at night um, through the infrared. It's just amazing. Um, you can see there, my neighbor has a light by their um, garage, and it just lights up so much well, so much better in the G5. It's amazing. Um, I'm pretty impressed by it. So even looking at the G4 to the G5, Yes, the G5 is cheaper, but the image performance, in my mind, is so much more improved. Um, so one thing to think about when you're looking at this camera. Again, I think from here on out, I'd probably be purchasing G5s for most of my setups and configurations um, and implementations. It, it's just a really amazing camera to look at, especially at night. I'm, again, very impressed with Unify and what they've done. Next part of the review is daytime performance. And the image quality is good in both, and I'm gonna compare it to the G4 that's also on that side of the house at opposing camera angles. Um, the one thing I noticed with the G4 is its microphone. The ability for it to pick up noises and what people are saying at the end of my road is pretty incredible. Um, I will notice with the G4, the daytime performance, you can see like there's some dithering or some noise in the picture, but it's still a very clear picture and very bright and very contrasty and punchy. Um, but if you flip over and we look at that G5 footage, same time, the image is really, really good, very bright, very detailed. There's not a lot of noise in the pixels. I will note that the uh, microphone, I don't think is as sensitive as the G4. And you can just notice that and maybe I'll give it a pause here and compare and contrast. I can't make sense of what they're saying per se, but you can definitely tell that there's a, a volume difference and a, maybe a clarity difference as to what is happening out there and what is being said. But again, the G5 performs really well. The microphone does pick up noises from folks and conversations out at the road, just not as well as the uh, G4 does. So in comparison to the G4 and the G5, I'd say the G5 has better picture quality and the G4 would have a better microphone performance. To wrap up this review, I put a table together and just wanted to compare against the G4, the G5. Um, and if you notice right here, I'm gonna give the winner to the image quality for daytime to the G5. Again, I didn't see the noise that I saw on the G4 camera in a real life setting. Next up, the nighttime performance. Hands down, the G5 is just far more sensitive to low light performance or low light settings. Um, I don't think you can go wrong with the G5. Um, it's just so bright and crisp at nighttime compared to the G4 even. The G4 is very well detailed and crisp, but the brightness just is not there in terms of nighttime performance. Third up, the microphone. Um, I'm going to have to give that to the G4. The microphone on the G4 is just far more sensitive than the G5. Next up, the smart detections. 
Even though the G5 now has a dual core processor instead of a quad core in the G4, it still does smart detections, it detects vehicles just fine, detects people just fine. Um, so both cameras do the, that feature pretty well. As far as the frames per second, um, the G4 is limited to 24 frames a second. The G5 uh, can do 30 frames a second if you need it to. I've obviously put mine back down to 24, 25 frames per second just to save on storage. I don't need that much um, level of smoothness in my videos and my uh, security footage for now. Uh, as far as the weatherproofing goes, they're both rated the same, IPX4. I will note that the G4 just seems a lot lighter as a camera, just holding the two in my hands. Uh, the G4 feels like there's a little bit more metal to it. The G5 feels a little bit more like the G3 series, so it's a little bit lighter, but it's still rated the same for weatherproofing. And lastly, the cost. I talked about this earlier too. Um, at $129, this camera just does a lot of things well uh, for a security camera and it's at least for my purposes for residential um whether it's the daytime performance the nighttime um the smart detections the crisp crispness crispness of the image and again i'm just blown away by the nighttime performance that was a huge 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 improvement that i wasn't expecting i was expecting when i got this g5 camera to, for it to be very similar to the G4, maybe if not even more inferior in quality because it is a cheaper camera. But again, the value you get out of $129 on this camera um, is pretty impressive. The only thing I will note with the G3 cameras that I've had uh, set up and uh, deployed in the past is sometimes the infrared filter would get caught. Um, I don't know if the, I've yet to see a G4 camera do that for me and I'm still curious if a G5 will do it. Give it a few years here and we'll see if the infrared filters stick. Hopefully Ubiquiti has improved that um, but at $129 for the 4 megapixel resolution that you're getting just the uh, wideness of the shot that angle that it's able to capture um, and the image quality is just pretty good. So to conclude this review, if I had to purchase a bunch of cameras for residential or a small business, I would say go ahead and buy the G5. It's a perfect camera. Um, and I know they have a G5 Pro, I think, coming on the way too. So that will be pretty exciting to get my hands on one of those if I ever choose to. But for as far as for what I'm doing residential, um, the G5 is just really, really good. And I'm going to leave it there because... I think you should go check it out. Um, you can order them right from Ubiquity's website. I didn't, Ubiquity didn't sponsor me or anything in this video. I'm just uh, a regular residential individual who is very concerned for security and safety in my neighborhood. I had one criminal uh, incident uh, on my property. So um, having security footage obviously provides some sense of security. Um, and not only that, um, it just gives you some uh, belief as far as understanding who might have committed something on your property or just knowing who did something um, and having that security footage always gives you a little bit more sense of security and not only that I think when people see cameras on property especially if you have many of them I think that's a deterrent into itself um, so having those up and uh, viewable I think is always a benefit too uh, keeps people at bay and makes them a little bit more alert and obviously shows you you're a little bit more keen on security and monitoring what thing what goes on in the neighborhood. Aside from that part of the review, um, just in general, I've always enjoyed the Unify lineup for Protect because there is no licensing costs. It's just hardware costs. You can build it and scale it in your own network. Again, it uses power over Ethernet. So that to me has always been a blessing because in, I live in Minnesota. So in the middle of winter, I saw one of my neighbors uh, changing out her ring camera or charging the batteries or whatever she had to do on a ladder, you know, when it's, you know, 10, 15 degrees out or less than that. Um, and not only that, those cameras oftentimes only record motion. You have to pay for cloud storage. They only record that motion event if the camera sensed that there was even motion to begin with. Um, motion detection isn't foolproof, but 
These cameras obviously record 24 seven, so I'm never missing a beat. Um, they always have power, so there's no batteries to change out and they're just running continuously and smoothly and never once do they ever present any type of headache or any type of uh, issues. Um, just completely smooth, the protect system, the app itself, monitoring things from mobile, getting my notifications. Uh, you know, if a vehicle shows up in the driveway, you can set a notification just for that smart detection. It's just pretty beautiful and they always add on to it. I use it on my Apple TV. So if I have to monitor cameras while I'm waiting for somebody to arrive or waiting for um, somebody to leave, or you know, if you have somebody around or if you have kids out in your backyard, the Apple TV app has always been uh, a pretty good option to have that too, to monitor things while it's going. But I'll just leave it there. I think both cameras are really good. The G5 obviously is a generation newer and Ubiquiti has really stepped it up in terms of the performance of the camera and the quality and the value.